we came here to Baghdad to watch OPEC at war, to look in particular at a regime seeking supremacy in the Gulf, and at its remarkable president, Saddam Hussein, one of the least known but most effective rulers in the Middle East. Relations between Iran and Iraq worsened when the Ayatollahs took over. The Iraqis claimed that the Iranians were refusing to implement border agreements and the first skirmishes broke out. In the first big incursion, Iraqi tanks rolled into Zain al Kaus on September the 7th. Two days later, they occupied the border village of Saif Saad. On September the 17th, the Iraqi army captured a group of border posts in the south and then the war began in earnest. At the beginning of last week, Iraqi MiGs bombed 10 Iranian airfields. The next day, the Iranians hit back, and three British workers became the first foreign victims of the war. Iranian resistance crumbled in the early days to the advancing Iraqis. There are signs now that they might not be having it all their own way, but in this sector at least, the Iraqis are jubilant hauling up the Iraqi flag over Iranian government buildings, bringing with them propaganda posters of President Saddam Hussein, and posing for ironic group photographs with the old imperial lion of Iran. Now, the Islamic revolution has been replaced by the ruthless Arab socialism of President Saddam Hussein. It's about people, and it's about hardware, the thousand and one items which come under the general heading of weapons. They've played a major role in the story of man. It's been proven time and time again that courage and heroism when pitted against superior weapons add up to nothing more than martyrs. The helicopters appear to have landed first. Six of them, no evidence of more. Beside each, a telltale stack of empty cans revealed that their occupants had had time for a meal. Inside the belly of one helicopter that remained intact, guns, bullets, first aid, camouflage, radio equipment. The crash happened later. President Carter speaking live from the Oval Office this morning. If you are just joining us, perhaps we should recap and, and tell you that eight Americans were killed overnight when the White House uh, launched an operation to rescue the hostages in Tehran, but not only as far as a remote desert site. Anyway, at that point, because of what the White House calls mechanical difficulties, uh, the president canceled the operation, and just after that, two U.S. transport planes, which were apparently bringing the rescue team out of Iran, then collided on the ground. Certainly the inconvenience of this conflict has so far proved minimal. There's no petrol shortage, and the price is fixed at an envy-making 14 pence a gallon. So vast are their reserves that Iraqis say that the last two barrels of oil in the world will be theirs. You had referred earlier, Mr. Foreign Minister, to this being tantamount to an act of war by the United States. This problem cannot be resolved by the pressure of these kind of action. Any American military action, everything is going to be blown up uh, in the Persian Gulf. We are not going to surrender. American blackmails anymore. I hope they realize that it's not as easy as they may think. Today, anxious eyes are once again turned towards the Persian Gulf, which still provides 20% of the free world's supplies. What's happening is that the war on land between Iran and Iraq is spilling over into the sea, with Western tankers being the sitting targets for both sides. Saudi Arabia's King Fahd is expected to pressure the U.S. to increase its role in the region. The New Year's first victim in the Gulf tanker war anchored today for repairs. Friday, a missile ripped a hole through the hull of the Maltese ship Alga. An oil tanker runs the gauntlet of air attacks in the Gulf War. It's a voyage through the area where 14 oil tankers have now been hit by air attack from Iran or Iraq. British warship, British warship, oh, this is the Iranian warship calling you on Charles 16. And uh, you are in uh, formation with uh, two tankers. This is British warship, I am on passage in international waters, am I? The 422,000-ton Seawise Giant was delivered on December 3rd, 1979, to Universal Petroleum Carriers Incorporated of the CY Tung Group by Sumitomo Heavy Industries. Slide in share prices is the uncertain situation in the Persian Gulf. That took a new turn today when American warships shelled and destroyed two Iranian oil platforms and then raided another. A specialist Navy unit known as SEALs boarded a third one. This is apparently what the U.S. Navy did 
to the approval of watching sailors. Iran claims the attack caused $500 million worth of damage. Tehran is planning lawsuits against the United States. Warships are crowding the southern Gulf, pacifiers for a growing case of war nerves. The commander-in-chief was clearly pleased, believing his military decision was right on target. We thought that it was an appropriate and proportionate response. And the president does not believe the attack means the U.S. is now at war. No, we're not going to have a war with Iran. They're not that stupid. But the administration does not expect the military strike will end the Persian Gulf conflict. Nobody's thinking this will end it, but uh, at some point maybe they will realize that they're going to have to pay a price. Well, let me take you back. Uh, the date, I believe, was uh, in De December 20th, 1983. Uh, you were meeting with Saddam Hussein. I think we have some video of that. This Where did you here. get this video? From so the Iraqi television? This is from was. Iraqi television. When did they give it to you? Recently well, or we've back then? We've dug this out of the CNN library. I see. Isn't so, that interesting? There I am.